Coming up on the St. Paul Forum, the importance of after-school activities in our community. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Laura K. Prosser, and with me today are two individuals deeply involved in after-school programming across the state of Minnesota and in St. Paul. Carrie, Eric, welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Wonderful, yes. I'm Carrie Dennison Kaneen, and I'm the executive director of Ignite After School. We're Minnesota's statewide after school network. And we, you know, our mission in the world is to make sure that every young person in every community experiences the power of a high quality after school program. Wonderful. And Eric? I'm Eric Skold. I'm the director of Sprockets, which is St. Paul's out of school time network. And Sprockets really works to increase the quality, of, increase access to and improve the quality of after school programs in St. Paul. Wonderful. Both very important things when it comes to after school programming, correct? So why don't you walk us through, you know, the Minnesota Department of Education has gotten some alarming stats or maybe some important stats proving that after school programming is super important for the kids and their soft mm -hmm. skills and preparing them for the future. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those statistics, guys? Sure. So. Um, at the Minnesota Department of Education, they give grants out across the state through a program called 21st Century Community Learning Centers. And what's cool about that is they can gather data from all of those programs and then look at, like, is this making a difference for young people? And what they found is for um, low-income youth who participate or uh, students who's, uh, where English is a second language, if they participate often enough, so they go a lot during the school year to these programs, they do way better on math standardized tests and reading tests than do their peers who maybe only came a couple of times. So you can see that going to these programs, can, you know, and the programs aren't about, oh, let's do math drills or <laughs> let's, you know, these are fun programs where, you know, kids are doing STEM activities and hands-on activities and they're really engaged in a lot of enrichment arts and music. And those things, if they regularly go, it's helping them do better in school, which is really a powerful story to tell. And these programs are really important in St. Paul in particular. Um, the St. Paul Public Schools has a large program that's funded by the 21st Century and the, the Minnesota Department of Education called Flipside, which focuses on our middle school students. Um, and that really is a crucial time for young people to be engaged in after school, because it's, it's a time when young people are really uh, creating their identity and exploring their passions and their interests. So Flipside provides a great range of opportunities for middle school students to try different things out in, in different programs, um, explore what uh, they really might be passionate about and interested in um, in, in school buildings, but after school time and, and really explore different career paths, different interests they might have, anything from you know um, getting their homework help done or doing karate or basketball or an arts program or other things. And so 21st century plays a crucial role in St. Paul in providing lots of opportunities, especially for middle schoolers. So now what's the difference between 21st century and other after school programming that offers funding and things like that? Well, really the difference there is um, where the money comes from. So 21st century funding is the largest source of after school funding um, for us in the state of Minnesota. And it's money that comes from the federal government, goes to the Minnesota Department of Education, and then is granted out, as Carrie mentioned before, to different communities around the entire state. Well, there's some specific pieces about 21st century. So it's called the 21st Century Community Learning Center. So it requires this whole center approach. Um, it requires a partnership between a community organization and a school. So it's saying, how do we, you know, if kids are in school all day, how do we connect those schools with community-based organizations that have some exciting thing going on that they can bring into the school? Whereas other after-school programs, they might also partner, but they also might not. You know, they might be doing their own thing within their building, which is really cool too. Um, but it does have a few specific requirements to make it a 21st century right. learning center. And with the different federal funding, what 
challenges do you guys face with these requirements and with getting funding in general for after school programming? Well, I think, you know, for after school programs to be impactful, they have to be of high quality and they have to happen often. And so, you know, if we're one, wanting to see after school programs really have an impact on young people's lives, it's important that we invest in them so that they can happen multiple days a week and young people can come and participate often. And so that, as I mentioned before, they're of high quality. And what, what quality really means is having a, a, a good staff that knows what they're doing is well trained and, and is purposeful about their interactions with young people. The intention of the program and the impact that the program wants to have is clearly stated. So, you know, we have programs that want to increase young people's leadership skills and, and, and programs that want to increase young people's communication skills. All of that takes, um, you know, skillful interactions and activities to with young people, and that requires significant investment, training, and, and resources to, to to be able to build those types of programs. So, 21st Century is one example of a funding source that allows programs to really um, have enough funding to provide really robust programming that happens often, and and um, you know allows for a high quality of staff. But sometimes the funding landscape can be um, more difficult and programs have to really struggle to fund themselves and, and uh, find the resources they need to do their job and do their job really well. You guys were talking earlier about how important it is to offer training to those involved with after school programming so that parents know they're getting high level, high quality activities for their students and for their kids. Yeah, I think sometimes folks imagine that if there's an after school activity or program happening that um, it's kind of, it's a babysitting thing. It's sort of like, well, keep them entertained until parents are done with work and, you know, just maybe throw some crayons in the middle of the table, get out the board games and call it a day. Um, and that might happen <laughs> somewhere, um, but that isn't what Eric and I are working on. Mm -hmm. um, and with the programs that we work with, and there are so many high quality programs, especially in the Twin Cities and in St. Paul's who are really lucky, but just like becoming a teacher during the school day, where we all assume that that teacher has a philosophy that they're coming from or has learned how do you teach a child to read, it's the same thing in a high quality after school program. Um, it might not be the exact same training that a teacher gets because there's other things in an after school program we're looking for like youth voice and engagement. So we would say that after school is really youth driven, right? It's about mm -hmm. young people don't have to be there. Um, unless their parent makes them go <laughs> because of a daycare situation, but young people don't have to be there. So it's really a place where young people come, and if it's a really good youth worker, mm -hmm. that youth worker is saying, what are you guys interested in? What, what do you, you want to dig do? into? What are you passionate about? And the works with those young people to bring that out. Um, but there are best practices. It has to be scaffolded. You know, you have to build the activity one to the next. That's what makes a really good youth worker, and it's really about the relationship between that adult and that young person, and then helping that young person navigate all the relationships with other kids, mm -hmm. um, which ends up being something employers want. Like, can you work in a team? Do you know how to get along with others? Um, so those are all things that you're building in an after-school program. They're all benefits for the youth, but mm -hmm. what about for the parents? You mentioned that after-school programming is super supportive of low-income parents. Explain that a little bit to us for our audience. Yeah, well, I think after school is great because, you know, obviously it inspires learning and it inspires young people to pursue their passions and their interests, but it also helps working families because it provides a good, safe, productive space for young people to go after school when maybe they don't have access, their parents don't have access to childcare um, and don't know where their kids are going to be or, or what they're going to be doing. Um, so it really is an important um, aspect for, for families to be able to rely on a safe space for their children to be where they know that they're um, doing something great and, and you know, really um, helping the young people thrive. I know myself as a parent, I'm always looking for great opportunities for um, my children to do, and all the better if that happens at a time when I really could use help in taking care of my children because I'm at work or, you know, have to take care of other responsibilities. There's a national survey that was done by the After School Alliance where they found that, you know, over 70% of parents said that when they know their child is somewhere safe after school and they're not worried about, I don't know, did they get into the house with the key or are they maybe not at home when they should be, when they know where their child is, they focus at work. You know, they can really not worry and be doing what they're doing at work. 
And I think that's a huge, it just gives parents peace of mind. And I think, you know, to, to Eric's point too, there are great programs in St. Paul, like Urban Roots or Youth Farm. I love this example, because the other thing about after school is, let's say in your science class at school, you're learning about like, I don't know, sediment, sediments or something like that, and you're like, why am I learning about this dry stuff? Like, who cares? What's the relevance to my life? And then you go to, urban roots after school and you learn about you know rain gardens and you start building them in your urban neighborhood which is what they do there um, to figure out well why is this really important to the landscape it starts making that learning in school really concrete for you and you are doing something hands-on that's helping your community and I think that's that's really the magic that happens the magic well, the magic <laughs> and how do people there are tools out there to help them find the right after school program for their students, correct? Yeah, I mean, one great tool is that Sprockets has a program finder on its website, and our website is www.sprocketsstpaul.org. And this pro our program finder has hundreds of programs listed in it, and you can so search it in multiple ways and to find things that, you know, you can search it by the interest of your, your children and, and think about, um, you know, if I want to find a music program or I want to find an arts program um, because my child loves program, or if you're a young person yourself, you can look um, to find programs that are near my school or near the, near the bus route that I take often and, and use a map function to, to look at where programs are. And it's a really great opportunity to sort of um, just check out what's happening across the, the entire city of St. Paul and see what it is that really might um, ins you know, get you motivated to get out there and try something new. So speaking of a lot of different diverse interests that our students and our children have, how many programs are available across the state and especially in St. Paul for our community members? Well, that, that's a good question. I mean, there are lots of different opportunities for um, uh, kids across the state, and, and particularly in St. Paul. At, in Sprockets, we partner with over 50 organizations. In the Program Finder, you'll find hundreds of different programs that, that kids can get involved in. And these really do range from everything from, you know, uh, homework help, just getting help with your homework after school, to um, sports activities that are very, you know, that a lot of people think of and, and are common, but but also um, really in-depth activities at, uh, um, you know, the leadership activities that are hosted at the um, Amherst H. Wilder Foundation, to um, film activities that are hosted at the Independent Film Project over here uh, right next door, and just all kinds of different um, ways for kids to explore different things that they might be really passionate about or want, might want to dig into more, um, whether that's art, music, sports, or um, things that they didn't expect, like um, zoology or, or, or other things. Yes, I mean, there are a lot of programs, but we also see a lot of gap areas. Um, so earlier we talked about the 21st century funding at the federal level. Um, here in Minnesota, in order to get that grant, you get a score on an application. And what we found is that, you know, in order to get the funding, you have to get a certain score. You know, you have to get a B on the test in order to pass or whatever. Well, with this grant, we have lots of communities that have applied that have a passing score. We just don't have a, enough money. So there's 19 more communities around the state where if we add another 12, 13 million dollars of an investment, that's you know another 19 communities that could have programming that really don't. And it's harder for smaller communities and rural communities um, to provide these opportunities. We are very nonprofit rich in the Twin Cities. We have a lot of really wonderful opportunities and places, but they may not have an art center or lots of nonprofits. And so it might be that the school is the hub of those after school activities in a smaller town. Um, and if they don't have funding to make this happen, it can be really challenging, especially for families that where they're just really trying to make ends meet and they don't have a lot of extra dollars to purchase activities. Um, and so, you know, we really have been uh, really telling that story from Ignite's perspective and trying to educate our elected officials and others. We've had state funding. This state has decided this is important and we're gonna invest in it back in 2007 and those funds were cut and we've never restored those after the recession. So I think there's still a lot of communities around the state that could use that investment and could do a lot more and are ready to go and have great plans in place. But we just have to see that 
that investment happen. So outside of the rural areas where there is a need for programming, where are other programming needs? Where, where do mm -hmm. they need to fill in, at least in the Twin Cities area? Well, I, yeah, I'd say uh, that um, Kerry described the problem very well across the state, and the same is true in, in St. Paul. We do have a lot of great programs in St. Paul that are doing a lot of work, but we also have kids who still lack access to after-school programming and who, who would like more access to after-school programming. So um, the, a couple areas where we see a, a particular need is, you know, for there to be more opportunities for kids to participate. So a program might um, operate two times a week, but kids would really like to participate um, four or five times a week. And, you know, to, for programs to have enough money to expand the number of times that they operate is, is really important. And then, again, it's investing in the quality of those programs and the training and the um, resources that those programs can have, the materials that they have. But we, but we also see neighborhoods that have fewer programmings. Um, uh, in the north end in St. Paul, there are more young people than in some other neighborhoods, and there could we could use more programs um, to to uh, operate there and then and engage more kids. And um, Sprockets takes a look at every year at, at different um, participation rates across the city and tries to point resources to the appropriate places so that um, organizations who are looking to start a new program or who might have the ability to shift their uh, location of their programming can go to where um, people need it most and, and where there might be the biggest gap. For those interested in starting a program or filling in a gap, as you said, where can they go? How do they get started? Well, I hope that you'll come to Ignite's website. Um, we are www.igniteafterschool.org. And we just trained up, gosh, 15 people across the state in a new training called Beyond the Bell. And the whole point of that training is to help folks start a high quality after school program. And we're gonna be rolling out those trainings across the state this spring. So if you get in touch with us, and we had folks partnered um, from Sprockets who also received that training and will be able to do that training here in St. Paul so that we can get more people the resources and information they need to really start a program where, where they're needed. That's amazing. And speaking of high quality programming, some of the programming you guys are involved in is STEM, and STEM offers up opportunities, jobs, things like that. Why don't we touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so um, science, technology, engineering, and math, that's what STEM stands for. And, you know, I think the really interesting thing is when I got into this work talking about STEM were my own perceptions of that. And I thought, oh my gosh, math and science, that's why I'm the executive director of a nonprofit that I'm not an engineer. Um, that stuff's really hard. And I think a lot of young people feel that way. And a lot of parents who aren't in STEM fields might be a little intimidated by those topics. And so they may not encourage or know how to connect their child. And what we find is that the greatest number of jobs, the growth that's really happening is in STEM. And I think what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, when you think STEM, you think, oh, well, you're gonna need a four-year degree and then a two-year degree after that and all this advanced. But there's so many um, technical degrees that and fields that now require a, st a STEM background where like advanced manufacturing and those sorts of things. Um, and so we need young people across the spectrum who have had experiences with STEM learning and who can get excited about it and are familiar. And it's true that not every young person um, has that same access. So we have been at Ignite working to help programs, after school programs who haven't typically embedded STEM to try to figure out, well, how can you offer that? And how can you take that on and make those opportunities available? Um, and so we had 15 programs around the state, many, a couple from St. Paul participate in a cohort where they really got excited and, and helped staff feel more confident to lead these activities in their program. Um, so that, that's been a really important project we've been working on. And we have some great STEM programs here in St. Paul. Um, obviously, the St. Paul is home to the Science Museum of Minnesota, and they uh, have the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center within the Science Museum. And the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center takes a STEM justice approach to after-school programs. And so they really embed their STEM learning in ideas of social justice and, and really getting kids involved in solving issues that are relevant to them and their community. Um, we also have Create Tech Spaces at St. Paul Public Library 
which are maker spaces where kids can go and get really hands-on with different technology tools, um, really create things um, with each other and, and with the guidance of adults and really serve as a creative space where they can um, get, in, get, get in contact with lots of different, different techno technological tools. And then we're, uh, Keystone Community Services is just about to open up a teen tech center in partnership with Best Buy, which will be another space in our community where teens can go and um, learn lots of different skills, in, including some of the uh, more technical skills around um, music production, computer design, and, and other things that uh, not only are great job skills, but are, are things that uh, young people are really interested in and really want to have the opportunity to explore. So there's really a lot of different ways businesses and organizations, nonprofit or otherwise, can get involved in partnership with an after-school program. Absolutely, and, and we see more and more businesses taking a real interest in how they can support the development of those skills in young people so that they can ensure that when they get to their, um, their, their businesses as employees that they are really great employees that have the you know, skills that really make them effective within the workplace. Um, so we've been excited to have more of those conversations in St. Paul. And employment itself can be a, a youth development opportunity. St. Paul, um, the city of St. Paul has the Right Track program, which employs young people in the summer and some in, in the school year as well, um, which gives kids great access to jobs that they want and need in order to you know, uh, provide some resources for themselves and their families. But it also teaches them great the skills that will help them eventually get their career, which will help them you know, sort of thrive and hopefully stay in St. Paul and contribute to our community. Well, with our last five, ten minutes, why don't we talk about each of your own organizations and the impact it has on after-school programming in our area? Carrie, do you want to sure, start? Sure, sure. So Ignite After School a little bit more. I said earlier that we really want to make sure every young person experiences the power of after school. Well, that's kind of a big goal. How do we do that? Um, we don't run after school programs. Sometimes people come, we think, oh, Ignite After School, like, can I sign my child up? We don't do that, but what we do do um, is a couple of things. So we focus on partnerships. Um, I kind of say sometimes, you know, with schools, you know a school is a school and you can kind of organize all the schools. But with after school programs, it's libraries and rec centers and schools and nonprofits, and there's no one to kind of put their arms around all that and connect to everybody and say, okay, let's all go in the same direction. Do we all know how to define quality the same way? So that's what Ignite does in partnerships, is we're pulling people together. We get out around the state holding meetings to bring people together. Um, there's other organizations like Eric's and other parts of the state, so where we work with Sprockets as well as um, his peer organizations. So that's one thing, partnership. The other thing that we really work on at Ignite is education and professional development. Um, so we might do some things like offer a, tra a train the trainer where we train up you know, Sprocket staff and then they go and do trainings in their local community. Um, so we really wanna make sure all youth workers across the state are awesome at what they do every day. And then the last thing we work on is policy. So we do a lot of advocacy and issue education. Um, if folks are interested and want to be involved in that or, or if you are a parent who has an experience where the after school program that your child is a part of has really made a huge difference in your life or your child's life, we really want you to tell your local elected officials that. Um, they may not know that after school is something parents care about. We talk a lot about formal education and th that's also critically important, but you know, it's amazing. I've talked to legislators who have said, if I heard from five or seven parents that this mattered to them, that would you know, be on my radar. Um, so we're the place where we can organize those voices um, and help people tell that story to, to elected officials and also just to provide information so we know how many kids aren't participating. Where are those gaps? How much more money do we need to fill them? Where's the gaps in yep, the funding? Exactly. How can people help with those gaps? Yep, so we do all of that kind of work at Ignite. Wonderful. Yeah, and Sprockets does some similar work, but um, one main difference is that Sprockets is focused on St. Paul. And I mentioned earlier that we are trying to increase access to out-of-school time programming, so we do a few things to do that. Uh, one thing we do is we try to talk to people about the importance of after-school um, programming. 
and you know, one one thing we do is we come on, on uh, opportunities like this and, and share the word about after school. But we also try to um, go to parent fairs and talk to parents about how important after school is and what and uh, how they can get involved. Um, we try to talk to different media outlets about after school and and, and get people connected to that message. Um, and then we also have the program finder, which I mentioned before, which is a, a public way for people to see all the different opportunities that there are in St. Paul and and get involved and and look and see what they want to do. Um, and then Sprockets also does a lot of work to improve the quality of after school programs in St. Paul. And again, quality is really important because after school programs are not impactful if they're not of high quality. So Sprockets does provide a lot of training to youth workers. We provide access to different tools that um, programs can use to improve their programs, whether, whether that's man, uh, measurement tools or um, opportunities to really uh, think about how they design their activities and, and structure their programs. Um, but then we also provide some of that other information about trends across the city, about where after school is happening or who is, um, who is who's not having a lot of opportunity around after school. So shine lights on, on um, gaps and, and needs within the after school community to, to make sure that we're using our resources as efficiently as pos and possible. And aware of it. Yeah. If there's a program that doesn't know how to connect or get training or resources, we suggest you come to us. Parents who want to be involved a little bit more in advocacy or um, maybe are moving out of St. Paul and want to know, does the next community that I'm going to live in um, have something like that? We might know and could connect you to some opportunities in those places. Um, or just to find out information. Um, we have a lot of links on our website to other places that you can, you can find um, you know, that information. Or if you are going to be trying to advocate or talk about after school, we have a lot of facts and figures that you can use so you, you really know what you're talking about. Um, so all of that stuff. And we also really encourage folks uh, to check out our website at www.igniteafterschool.org. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for joining us. With our last minute, how can folks help? Who can they contact to improve funding, to pr improve outreach of their programs? Well, that's a great question, and I think it's a really important um, message that we're happy to leave you with. I, I mean, you know, within St. Paul, I think it's great to connect with, uh, you know, your representatives, about, uh, people at the city level, like your mayor and your city council. It's, an, it's important to... to uh, let them know how important these uh, issues are to you and that they use the resources like our libraries and our rec centers and the different programs that happen across St. Paul, but then also the representatives uh, at the state legislature who you know control some of the different um, funding mechanisms for out of school time to tell them. Yeah, I would say the same. I mean, really people are playing a role, your elected officials at all levels. At the city level, they're really responsible for your rec centers and your libraries and what are those activities look like. At the state level, we hope you'll call your state legislators and you know pay attention, ask questions. You know, we're gonna have a governor's race here. So go to those forums and ask, is after school on your radar? What do you think about that? Um, so we really encourage that. And at, and at the federal level. So 21st century that I just was um, talking about, that so many kids, I mean, St. Paul, there are three grants in St. Paul, and if you could just imagine if you know, flip side closed their door on every program in every middle school, it would be devastating. And the president's budget completely eliminates 21st century, um, and it would completely go away. So, you know, really talking to folks in the House and the Senate at the federal level to say this is really important, keep that funding there so Minnesota can keep these programs strong is also really important. Thank you, Thank you. so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for us in the St. Paul Forum. Join us next week at the St. Paul Neighborhood Network.